you're ever going to have. <laughs> All right, David Vanellis, the Facebook whisperer. How are you, David? I'm doing great, Mark. Like, okay, podcast was cool and all, but Facebook Live, Coffee Talk with the Lang Geek himself. I'm loving this. I'm loving it. In case you don't know who we are, uh, we're Land Geeks at thelandgeek.com. We're both professional land investors. Um, I've done over 5,000 land, 5, land flips since 2001. Um, and David, how long have you been land investing for? Uh, uh, since July last year. Since so July about, last year? I'm about 30 sales in now. 30 sales. And how has it moved the needle in your life? Oh, man. I am ready to do this full time at the end of this year. I'm tired of being a cabinet maker. <laughs> There's better Absolutely. things out there. And, like, I mean, that's one thing, right? But, like, <clears throat> slowly I've been able to have more and more days where I can do this. And... I mean, I, you may have seen the picture I posted. I got to take my son to his gym last week, last Thursday. So, man, that was great. Like, that's what I'm doing this for. Yeah. You know, extra it, time with my family. Yeah, it, it's 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 so nice to be able to have that that extra time. I mean, you know, money's nice, but it doesn't make anybody happy. It's really ultimately what it what money really buys you is freedom and flexibility. And that's, that's what the passive income model that we teach really, I think that's really the gift of it is that when your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, it opens up all these different opportunities um, and, and oceans of energy for you to really explore what you really want to do in life. I have no, I have no passion for raw land, right? Do you have any passion for the raw land you buy? Zero passion for raw land. <laughs> no. Passion for my family. And that's what I see as a common thread for most people who do this. Yeah. How? Okay. So you, I kind of lost you there for a second. Um, how's, your, how's your Wi Fi over there? I got a great upload speed over here. Oh, okay. Well, I hope everybody else is, is able to hear you well. So, um, David and I want to talk about um, an interesting topic that kind of comes up and you know i think everybody kind of thinks about but nobody really kind of says it to to us but um we want to address it because it's i think it's really really important um because we were talking about it last week we said oh you know this would be a great coffee talk topic and um it's you know i'll let david kind of talk about it so david you you kind of tell everybody what you know the the, the elephant in the room sure sure so, I um, mean, if you ever see that link to book a call with us, I'm one of the people you'll be talking to. Um, and so I find it where they'll see how it works, but why is Mark even teaching it at this point? Like, I think they're, uh, they're concerned that, you know, there's no more land deals, and now to make money, you're just trying to teach it, you know, since you can't do it anymore. So what do you? Yeah, think? yeah. Th- those who can do, those who can't teach, right? <laughs> I mean, I, and I think it's a, I think it's a fair question actually because if you look yeah. at, how, I mean, you know, real estate information is so sleazy. You go to one of these you know big seminars, and uh, it's not even like the guru in in the room, right? Teaching anything. Um, and usually what they're doing is they're talking about these deals they did at the top of the market, like 2005, 2006, all this money they made flipping homes, right? Well, the dirty little secret is they make more money on education than they do in their own real estate business. And now, you know, all that sort of, you know, uh, and it's fair is like, well, it gets applied to, to us, right? Like, well, it's yeah. so great. Why? Why would Mark teach it? Like, why would he create his own competition? Um, is he even doing deals anymore? So I think it is. Yeah. I think it is a fair question. So let, let's talk about it. Yeah. So and so the way I typically respond to it, and even from my own perspective, you know, why couldn't I just be a student and just make a ton of cash? Uh, you know, selling my own property, and or you know, I could have held on to this. You know, you know the Facebook secrets and made a lot of money there and me and a few others and not have taught that. But I mean, abundance mentality. Um, 
I guess I didn't have a name for it until I, you know, I really met you and started talking about scarcity mindset versus um, abundance mentality. But you know, the more I share, the more I don't know. So this is how I feel about it. The universe has a perfect account. So the more I share, the more I'm gonna get somewhere else. And so by you creating this teaching program, it's your life. So this brings us joy. Like I love helping someone sell a property on Facebook. I get so happy when I get that box. Like, hey, David, I just sold a property on Facebook. I'm so happy right now. And yeah. then, oh, man, that makes my afternoon or my day. Yeah, yeah. Here, do you hear? Here's Pablo's box. Um, I played it. I actually emailed this out, but I I love it so much. I'm gonna play it again. Um, where okay. is it? Um, this my- is this is like what two days ago. Mm-hmm. How are you? It's Pablo. Just wanted to call you and say, woohoo! Yeah. Um, I sold two today. I got two deposits. One from that lady that I spoke to you about on Wednesday, and another was um, this uh, person that we were communicating with yesterday and today. So there's Pablo. Account, and uh, very, very excited. Thank you so much for your help and your support. So, so I mean, you know, they're 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 really for us. Like, there's. There's there's no better feeling than you know than somebody else being successful and and the I the, you know the question is 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 it an abundant world or is it a scarce world right and it took a long time for me to feel like you know there's billions of acres out there there's three thousand seven counties how much of that can I buy. How much of that can David buy? How much of it can a million of us buy? We will all run out of money before we run out of deal flow, right? Um, I remember Andrew Warner on Mixergy mm-hmm. interviewing me. He's like, Mark, I'm really skeptical. He's like, you're making 3,000 to 1,000% returns on investment. He's like, if it's so great, you know, at some point competition's got to come in and it's got to lower your margins. He's like, I'm skeptical. And I'm like, fair enough, Yeah, you know? Maybe one day it will. I, it just hasn't happened since. I mean, if, if anything, my business has only grown since 2000. Now we had a dip in 2010 and 2011. And, yeah. Right. Because um, of uh, the market crash. Now, 2008 wasn't a bad year. Right. When when everybody else was getting destroyed in real estate, land was the last to get hit. But we did get hit in 2010, 2011, but it was still profitable, right? But exactly. Mark went crazy and I just had to like sell my luxury cars <laughs> and like stop doing private school, and, like lower my personal overhead, right? Cause I was an idiot and I forgot, oh, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. There's actually a market, it goes up, it goes down. And I was doing the Parkinson's law with money where, you know, as much money as I made, I kept spending. So yeah. that was a humbling lesson, but otherwise, you know, it just keeps growing. I mean, David, you know, you've seen the Langy community grow. Has it affected your business? Like Scott Todd did 197 deals last year. I did 192. I mean, I don't understand. So, yeah. So for selfish reasons, like I shared uh, the Facebook strategy, right? So right. the more people selling on Facebook, the more, uh, you know, People see land more often and it becomes a thing. So now it's less of a scam thing. If you see, if you, if someone sees an, a listing for a piece of property and it's more like, oh, cool, another deal. So the more people that are selling on there, the better off I am. And so, yeah, I mean, it's totally for selfish reasons that, you know, I'm really happy people are selling on Facebook. <laughs> you know, there's a market there now where there wasn't before. Yeah, I mean it's it's and it's so funny. Like people keep asking me, Mark, are you, are you selling on Facebook? We're trying. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've got I've I've gone through the Facebook course on the Investors Toolkit. Um, it's phenomenal. Yet, you know, for some reason, my team and I have not. We we're still selling so much more to our buyers list. Yeah, absolutely. And on Craigslist than we are on Facebook, but. So what, right? Like exactly. other people are doing great on Facebook. It's it's amazing. So yeah. oh, Pablo's got a question. Okay. 
Um, David posted earlier about how he's aware of seven other land geek investors working in the same county. I don't see it as an obstacle. Yeah. yeah it's, absolutely. It's Matter of fact, the more people in my county, the better off I am. <laughs> yeah. Um, I oh, posted it, that picture. It's true. I mean, there, there's one county in Texas that has 20,000 tax delinquent properties. How much of it can we all buy? Yeah. Not, not for everybody. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So, Anna, Mark, there's so much land out there. But is it all owned or do we only deal with purchased neglected land in this type of business? Hopefully my question makes sense. So Anna's got a question. She's like, are we only going after the low hanging fruit, which is people that owe back taxes and live out of state? Or do we go after everybody that owns, you know, raw land? And the question, the answer for me is when you first start, go after the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And then as after you, you go full cycle, um, go after everybody your response rate will be lower, but yeah. so what? What do you think, David? Yeah, so, I mean, some properties I mail to, the property taxes are about 20 bucks for the entire year. So, I mean, a lot of people just want to do right. Like 97% of people in this world are honest and just want to pay their bills on time. So are they not going to pay a $20 you know, property tax bill just to keep their property? Well, of course they are. So, I mean, but they want to sell. They just don't know it until they see my, my offer letter. Right. So, yeah, I mail, I mail the full tax roll just because people pay their bills. Yeah, for those of you on Facebook right now, in case you don't know who we are, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with the landgeek.com. I'm with David Benalis, the Facebook whisperer who teaches people how to sell raw land in buy-sell groups in on Facebook. Um, he's also a Land Geek certified coach. So if you want to learn more, go to thelandgeek.com and um, go there now. So Steve Slack has a question. David and Mark, how much experimenting have you done with Facebook ads for selling in buyers list building? All right. I have done. Uh, so I've done some experimenting with that. Uh, the results are not final yet. But if you're at boot camp, I want to talk about this in depth. Okay, so there's a little teaser. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, quickly, what I'm going to go over is comparing Facebook to Craigslist. You know, it's a completely different point in the buyer's funnel. You know, for Craigslist, they're already interested in buying land. So that's, you know, you definitely need to be marketing on Craigslist because people are already interested. Uh, for Facebook, it's more top of funnel. They don't really realize they want land until they see your ad. So it's a really different stage of buyer. So beyond Craigslist, and I've tested Facebook ads. Um, we could talk about it more at Bootcamp. Uh, there's some strategies I have to tweak before you know, I go public with any type of strategy for that. Because that costs right. money. Right, but I, I like the way Steve phrased it because it is all, you know, all marketing is is an experiment. And that's the way you have to look yeah. at it is you're just experimenting and seeing, okay, does this work? If it does, I'll keep going. If it doesn't, you know, I won't. Yeah, right. exactly. Good distinction. So, so here, David, so let's yeah, let's ahead. get uh, let's get the viewers to practice some abundance mentality right now. So, hit the share button and share this with uh, your own page, your own uh, your own followers. That's how you can practice abundance mentality. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I bet you um, very few people, and you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, very few people when they invested in the Investor's Toolkit told their friends and family that they were going through this land investing course. Um, and I could get, I get it, right? Um, I, just, I, I just almost finished my book, Dirt Rich, and I just bought a course yesterday called Launch a Bestseller, Right. Um, am I sharing that I'm doing this course? No, I'm not. But I, I mean, I, I haven't gone through the course yet, but if it's great and somebody was like, hey, I just wrote a book and it's a great course, I probably would share it. But if yeah. it was something where I felt like they were maybe competing with me, maybe I wouldn't. So it's all about a minutes mentality. Yeah, so that was the same for myself. Like I didn't want to share what I was doing until I saw that it was proven and successful. And now, you know, I, I almost share every single thing you post on, on the Facebook page. Cause you know, I'm, I know it's, you know, it's legit. I know it works. And now I can, I feel competent enough to talk about it with other people. 
So yeah, yeah, and and, <laughs> and again, you know, it's the the bigger that market is, the better for all of us because some people are going to have uh, more money than time, right? Yeah, and they're going to just want to invest in the raw land. Um, some people are going to have not as much money, and they have more time, and they'll wholesale out properties. The guys like you and me, right? So another source of deal flow. So as the community grows, it's like this. It's like this virtual cycle of of synergy for lots of different way, lots of different ways for everybody to to really grow and in in any way that you know they need to at that point in time in their life. So yeah. it's, it's it's pretty exciting a, um, to watch. There's enough room for everybody, and I'm not concerned about that at all. And in the future, what what I really see is people, you know, segmenting their skills. So if someone's really good at selling, it might be possible where someone creates like a, a sales company and we list with them and they do the selling for us or yeah. someone just specializes in wholesaling or, you know, that kind of thing. Exactly. I mean, last week I talked about you were creating our um, Land Geek virtual assistant team to actually, we're training them on our business so that, our land geek community can tap in to those virtual assistants. They already understand the business and it, it, you just go, you just, you know, kind of a plug and play type of system. And so it's just more opportunity for everybody. Um, and, you know, and really what we want to do at land geek is solve every pain point in this business. Right? So in LG pass, 90% of the business now is automated in payment geek. Right, all the headaches I had with note collection and managing notes and managing borrowers has been solved. Right, so now the labor aspect we're solving every pain point we want to solve um, from deal flow to selling, and then post selling. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and then we'll figure out you know what comes next and. You know, we'll be on top of it. Like with social media, change, things change so fast. Um, do you remember Vine? <laughs> yeah. Man, RIP Vine once Instagram had Instagram stories or Instagram Live where you could post videos. And then, you know, Snapchat, you know, they're, they're in danger of features. So, you know, I tint windows. And so I tint windows for a social media company that's in Venice, you can look it up. Um, and so like, I, I can't give details about you know what they do, but I can guarantee that they will always be one step ahead. They have such good leadership. And so I, I really see the same thing what you've done, Mark, with you know the entire land, because that you're always one step ahead and you know staying in front of the, any trend we have going and you will pour the resources into it, so. Yeah, there's yeah, no, I mean, yeah, that's 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 what's so great about being a geek. Right? <laughs> um, and in case you don't know who we are, uh, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek with thelandgeek.com. I'm with David Benalis, the Facebook Whisperer. Um, we are professional land investors, and we also teach people how to buy and sell raw land, which we think is the best passive income model. A one-time sale, you get recurring income every single month without renters, rehabs, renovations, or rodents. Um, we also have three podcasts, the Art of Passive Income Model podcast, the Best Passive Income Model podcast, and the Land Geek podcast. All right. So, David, what is the future that you see right now as far as Facebook marketing? What's, what's the, like the latest trend? Uh, some land on buy, sell group is way more common so i would say ramp up your posts uh stop deleting so that's you know a quick change we can do is don't delete um let's see what else and then there will come a time when from a business page within groups so that opens up a whole new possibilities on what we can do and what i learned over at that convention in san diego so I'm holding on to those tricks uh, and tools, just waiting to give them out as soon as I can when it's relevant. Because I don't want to overwhelm people with advanced strategies when right now you need to be focusing on mailing and marketing. 
Yeah. So yeah. Let's, get, let's get the basics out of the way. I mean, mail and market and sell some property before you uh, consider advanced strategies. Absolutely. Does anybody have any questions for David regarding Facebook marketing? Any questions or any or any other types of questions uh, for e either one of us? Um, David, you're going to be on the next roundtable next week? I am. I am. I missed the last two times. Um, work obligations, but, you know, put that in perspective, you know, that'll be over soon. <laughs> no worries. No worries. You're, you're, yeah. missing, you're missing all the geeky tips and tricks. I am, but I'm listening to it and I'm having a ball, like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the end when uh, it's, you know, time to uh, let freedom ring. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so bad. It's so bad, but it's fun. All right. So any questions? Uh, Nathan just had a question I saw. Oh, really? I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, Nathan, right here it is. Look at that. How far out should I post land and buy in subgroups? Great question. So, I mean, same as Craigslist, you know, within a four to five hour drive, you're going to get your most leads. Um, I know one guy, he posts his Arizona property all the way in Texas. Um, he doesn't seem to be getting too many repercussions by doing that. But I would say pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. So I don't want any admin kicking me out of a group because I'm selling land that's too far away. So, you know, I work, you know, parts of Nevada. Uh, I'm doing Utah, Idaho, California. Uh, anything farther out than that, you're just kind of wasting a post, I believe. That makes sense. I'm drinking a, uh, a trough of water here. <laughs> But this is great. It's, it's like well, one a day is like you know, what you required, your water requirements for that. Was that 64 ounces? This is, how many ounces is this? This is 48 ounces. Is that enough? I, um, I don't know. It feels like, you know, whatever you drink, it's never enough, right? It's like, unless you're like literally next to a bathroom all day, you haven't met your water requirements. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. All right, Steve Slack's got a question. What would would you say that we should mainly focus on owner finance properties in Facebook buy sell groups versus cash sales? It's a great question. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like there's an invisible line right around fifteen thousand dollars. So if a property you're trying to get, let me rephrase that. Ninety percent of my sales on Facebook are, are terms, right? People can afford you know a couple hundred bucks a month, a car payment, really. Um, you can get a cash sale up to maybe six, seven thousand. Uh, anything above that, if you're looking for cash sale, head over to Craigslist. You'll find your cash buyer there. But otherwise, we're looking finance all the way on Facebook. Well, it's not called it finance anymore. We're calling it payment plans. <laughs> payment, yeah. We, we, it's, it's or extending. Well, we don't want to say extending credit. Payment plans. I can't talk about it. Installments. Installments. <laughs> um. All right. Any other questions before uh, David and I end? Now, David and I have to uh, do a little song. Yeah. For, for someone. We, we might as well do it now. I, do I, it. I, All right. Right. If, if you're watching, you can join in. We won't hear you, but you can yeah. join in. And I would definitely go on Danielle's Facebook page and wish her a happy birthday. So here we go. Danielle Dyboff, you're on. One, <laughs> two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy. This is like Let Freedom Ring. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Danielle. Happy birthday. To <laughs> you. There's Danielle. And many more. Many more. <laughs> awesome. That was like let freedom ring like to the tenth power. Like that I can't know. be <laughs> da Danielle's probably too young. You're probably too young too to remember the gong show. But it used to be like they they have these acts and like mm -hmm. so, like ninety percent of them were horrible. And if they were horrible, like the, the judges would take a gong and gong them off. Right, I can just see Danielle with her like virtual gong. Be like, guys, please don't sing anymore. Gong. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, Daniel. Daniel Dybal, we, we appreciate you. Yeah, we appreciate you. You are the grease that keeps these wheels going. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if in, you know, it's not, it wasn't my brainchild either to have that, that VA, the Land Geek VA team. Um, it was Danielle, right? So, you know, there you go. Oh, gong. <laughs> gong. That's so funny. So before um, we go, uh, let's, yeah. if people want to hit me up on Messenger, David Benalis, just add me as a friend. We can chat. Or let's give them the link to book a call with uh, myself or Mike Zeno. Uh, I can post that here in the comments right after this call. Yeah, that'd be great. I think you can you I can you can do it on screen updates. Yeah, actually, yeah, I think so. You have a link, or I don't think I can have it on my end. I don't have that feature. Oh, okay. So I do HTTP www.thelandgeek.com forward slash training, and then you scroll down. And you can book that call. Yeah. Let's see if that works. Does that work? There we go. I see it. I see it. We're good. There it goes. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you, I'm, I'm loving be live. <laughs> I like be live too. This is pretty cool. Working on a, another one, but uh, once that's polished, then we can go with that one. Yeah. Hey, uh, just out of the people who are on here right now, um, how many people would be interested in the book Dirt Rich? Um, you be interested in reading Dirt Rich, David? Yeah, absolutely. I'll get. Are you going to do the Audible for it? I, I'm <laughs> definitely. I'm I because I love audible audiobooks. I'm definitely doing the Audible, but really, it's like yeah, it's, I want you, know, you know, Danielle's sort of my book Sherpa, and she's if Danielle's like Mark, do audio. I'm doing audio, but I want to do audio. But if Danielle's like, don't do audio, I won't do it. Kind of, it's kind of up to Danielle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's up to Danielle. That's the way it should be. Yeah. Well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> so in case you don't know who we are, uh, we're The Land Geeks at www.thelandgeek.com. Uh, go to that site, download for free the Passive Income Blueprint, get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and get uh, access to over 100 Land Geek podcasts. All right, Cynthia, can't read enough, always open to new books. Oh, Danielle said yes, audio yes. All right, so I'm going to do audio. So um, I'm excited about Dirt Rich, actually. Do you like that title or should I change it? What do you think, David? <laughs> Does it sound sleazy? Dirt Rich. Have one of those sleazy book covers <laughs> with like a bunch of dollar signs, Ferraris. <laughs> it's like the total opposite of me, by the way. <laughs> That's maybe, funny. It's maybe scary. I can do it so it's like a combination you know, it's like dirt rich and like a minute, like, you know, like a, like meditating. <laughs> I don't know. We got to be consistent. Let's just go for the cheesy cover. <laughs> you want to do a cheesy cover? Pablo, should I do a cheesy cover? I can't do a cheesy. It's not me. I can't do a cheesy cover. <laughs> Cynthia wrote a book. Her, her cover is not cheesy. Let's, let's just do that. All right. So um, doubt, any more questions before we end? Anything else? Do you guys want to see us do this next week with David, the Facebook whisperer? Shh. He'll teach you how to sell on Facebook. Shh. <laughs> whispering. Yeah, if anyone's going to the boot camp uh, Thursday before it all gets going from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., I'll be uh, somewhere in the lobby. I'll go live to show you where I am. Let's hang out. You know, my first experience at boot camp was rather intimidating. You know, I'm, I'm a shy person to begin with. So I showed up and I sat down, put my head down. I made one friend. Um, I feel like you could all do way better than me and make at least two friends. <laughs> yeah. So friend me and then at least one more person. Then we're good. <laughs> oh, Dave, Dave we've got to talk about I'm Not Your Guru. Oh, I, yes. I, I watched it on Netflix per your recommendation. I actually wrote a, uh email about it for this week. So do you want, oh, me, to, nice. do you want me to spoil it for you or no? Yeah, yeah, spoil it for me. Let's spoil it for everybody, really. Escaping average. There it is. Cynthia's escaping average, for sure. Um, Nothing like a stream plug. I love so, it, Cynthia. So th th this is my <laughs> takeaway of, of, of I am not your guru. Um, I think he is the real deal, and I think he's very passionate about what he does. What turned me off about it was it felt cultish, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
that was that was one thing I took away from it. it was like it, it felt kind of cultish. The second thing was I'm skeptical of real transformation, real transformation that sticks that you can integrate in a six day event, right? Um, yeah. I do believe that there can be a temporary transformation, right? Um, and I believe it could be a great jump start to transformation, but I think that the expectation of in six days I'm going to transform my life. I don't know. I think it's, it, it's, it's too tough, but Oh, but Cynthia is coming to his defense. Tony Robbins is amazing. Go to a live event. Documentary doesn't do it justice. Okay. Well, I think what Mark is addressing is the staying power for anything because so if you've read that book 12 week a year, uh, it talks about the, the emotional cycle of change. So it starts off with uh, uninformed optimism. Let me go from this side of the screen. Uninformed optimism, informed pessimism, the valley of despair, and then eventual change. So you know what an event like that will do is give you a lot of uninformed optimism. But then, lo and behold, Monday comes around and you have to get back to implementing everything. And you know life pressures will you know hit you in the face again. So I th- yeah, that's what Mark's really talking about here. Um, David, what, you know, what, like, what was your takeaway what, what, when you saw it, and why did you recommend it to me? <clears throat> oh boy, uh, one because you talk about Tony Robbins so often. I just want, I, I just thought it would be a good watch. Um, right. I got a lot of a. Uh, I want to say breakthrough, but it, it was really intriguing, like the, the parts that mention. Uh, what is it? Free the boy and the man will appear or heal the boy. And the heal man the boy and the man will appear. Yeah. Yeah. I got so uncomfortable when that, when that came on, like I cringed and like looked away and like got on my phone to distract myself. And then my wife called me. She's like, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> She's like, pay attention. I'm like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, change is hard. And you know, that really hit home with me. Like, you know, I have daddy issues. <laughs> I want to please my father. And so, you know, I guess if we're all a little scarred emotionally as, you know, as children, <laughs> no one has a perfect childhood. No, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if you, if you get it right 51% of the time as a parent, you're doing amazing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's exactly what I'm shooting for. 51% parenting. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. a good book. I mean, is, that, is that a book? 51% parenting? No, no, but let's, let's write it. I'm going to get the, 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 the website right now. <laughs> yeah, I, there's a great book on parenting that uh, I always go back to called The Secure Child. It's like this thick. It's like really easy. Have you read it? Uh, who's the author? I, I was saying Greenspan, Stanley Greenspan. I'll get it. It's, just, it's, it's a really easy read. Um, and it's just just, you know, pure wisdom about that secure attachment for for young children floor time letting them lead the floor time as opposed to you leading it um and you know just these it's it's like a daily habit right if you do that habitually every day with your child just you know 30 minutes to an hour of floor time it's they feel secure and that with that security and that secure attachment you know amazing things happen right yeah yeah so, i mean like the fact that we can even talk about parenting right now is because the land business has almost gotten so simple that we can talk about stuff that actually matters, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's that's the whole thing is that um, that's really, you know, in 2001, my son was six months old and my wife could run out of the house and do whatever she needed to do. And I was home working from home with the baby. I could work in the morning, I could work at night and and go to the park in the afternoon and, you know, do the swing and do all that. My wife would take walks. And now even today, like the kids are older. They're not as interested in being with us. But, like I'm working, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Monday and Friday, my wife and I are having dates and it's amazing. And, yeah, you know, that's... that relationship now is like really central because it's, you know, the kids, it's still, don't get me wrong. It's still their world and we're still living in it. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, physically, it's very different. Mentally, it's tougher, but physically, it's different. You'll get there, David. Yeah, I'll get there. My son is, uh, was he 15? Or, yeah, he's 15 months now. 
And yeah, he's totally, it's his world. We're living it. I'm looking around at the house and there's nothing but toys in every location, little stations for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, to put it all in, in perspective, I mean, that's really the ultimate goal of, you know, when your passive income exceeds your fixed expenses, that's what you're getting is you're, you know, you're going to be able to focus on developing, you know, stronger, deeper relationships. And ultimately at the end of life, that's what makes people happy, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's been happiness study after happiness study about it. So um, that's, that's really, you know, we, we're talking about buying and selling raw land, but really it's just a vehicle. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. this is just a vehicle. Like we, neither of us have passion for land, and this is a, certain things in our life that we want. Um, someone could, you know, want an extra thousand bucks a month, and if that helps them guarantee that rent will be paid or their mortgage will be paid, I mean, how much less stress would that be? And, you know, like you know, most marriages fall apart for you know finances and a few other things. But if we can help take care of the finances aspect, man, like we're making this world a better place, Mark. I know, I know. So if you really want to get to the next level and you know really accelerate your progress in this, you need a Sherpa. Um, schedule a call with David and learn more about flight school. Uh, we've got 11 spots left for the next flight school starting, I believe, in May. May 2nd. May. Yeah, May 2nd. So, um, we still have spots, but it will fill up fast. Um, so definitely book your call and learn more about that. And you can go to landgeek.com forward slash training to book that call. David Banalis, are we good? Mark Podolsky, we're great. All right, man. Thanks for <laughs> jumping on. Let's do this uh, next week, the week, the yes. few days before boot camp. I'll see you in Vegas, baby, Vegas. Yeah, Vegas. Vegas. <laughs> Awesome. Whoa. Can we do that for the ring? Or is that like a podcast thing? It's kind of a podcast thing. Okay. But, let's, leave that, let's leave that for Tuesdays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. We have the happy birthday Danielle. So that was enough today. That, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Poor, poor Danielle. She's like, oh, gosh. They're singing now. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Um, um, we'll see everybody next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, David. No problem, Mark. Thank you.